Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and in this episode we're back on the W123 again. Well, my W123 rather than Barry's yellow one. But this time we're going to be exploring the possibility of making this large piece of metal, which is a rear wing for the said car, be not floating around the garage and be attached to the car somehow. Proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the Furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Well, the new repair panel I've got will cover the entirety of this section from the rear bumper all the way to the back door. I'm not sure how much I'm going to cut away completely. Um, I'm going to start by cutting small and then working my way out rather than just hacking away immediately because if we can keep our original metal in the car, well that's certainly got to be better. However, we do have these swage lines we can use to disguise cuts. The panel comes pre-joddled along the top edge, so in theory we could cut this straight along underneath the uh, trim line. We could cut it straight along underneath the trim piece and hide the joint underneath there. Or we could cut it much closer to the wheel arch itself and not put too much metal in. Hey, we've got the choice. So we'll have a look at what we've got underneath here and then make the decision. Right. Okay, going to start off by gaining access to this properly. So I'm going to lose these side strips, lose this bumper, and then mark some datum points from the top of here down to well, where things should finish. So I know how or what position to weld the new panel in. Although I have to be perfectly honest, because this has been cut about in the past, I'm not sure how useful any measurements are going to be, but I can measure down to this point. I need to see what I'm going to do in a second. Right, first of all, let's get ready to rumble. Uh, this off here and try to avoid damaging that as we go. So I'm prying it from underneath so that if I do mark it, it's not going to be easily visible. But just to keep things interesting, the last one isn't a pry out one, it's got a seven millimeter bolt just up above the uh, tail lights inside. Probably best to do this one first if you remember it. As I said, luckily these trim pieces are all a bit manky anyway so it's not a major issue if one gets a bit bent. Right. Next up I've taken the lamp out because that was a new old stock one which is absolutely beautiful and I don't want to risk that getting any uh, spray of weld onto it because that would be a bad thing indeed. We'll keep that safe and I'll gaffer tape over the hole because that's also, well the reason I bought new old stock lights for this like on day one after I got the car was water was coming in here because someone stole the lights out of it front and rear while the car was in storage and obviously it was filling the boot with water once I got it outdoors. Um, so it made the car look pretty and it stopped the car filling the water. Next up taking, oh damn it that's just sheared off. This bit of trim here coming off irreversibly. Um, at least two of the bolts survived, so I might need a new one of those. But anything that might be damaged by grinding or heat is coming away. Right, all this plastic trim needs to come out so I can get to the bolts on the back of the, uh, the bumper on the side corner. Right, so there's the bolt down there, which you can't see because there's a bit of plastic trim in the way, but I think that's about 12 or 11 millimetre. I have got this big tray of all the different sizes and drives down here, which makes life very easy when you're out in the driveway looking for a certain size. That was an 11, it wasn't an 11, it is a 10. And now, actually with that plastic pull up, I can really see how bad, how bad the rust and floor is down there. I should have pre-sprayed this with some loosening fluid. I'll do the bottom of the bumper while I'm there as well. Oh, there's a, because there's a, I already call it a tow bar on the back of this, there's a great big plate been bolted to the back of it, which means getting access to the number plate, not the number plate, the bumper bar bolts is suddenly kind of tricky. At least the ones I can even see. I could do with emptying this boot completely and actually uh, taking this plastic trim out all the way. Because that's going to be in the way when I do some welding and cutting. There we go, that's nearly off. That is the corner part of the number plate. I'm looking for a number plate, it's a bumper. Oh, there's a spider in there, a very panicked spider. 
Right, that has now been removed from the boot side. That trim panel is gone, so I can have a proper look inside here. Right, so that hole there is meant to be there. That's where the light lives. Interestingly, there is a cut off earth wire just here. There is an additional earth wire that seems to have been, but now it's not added to that. This goes off the light connector and is earthed to this screw here. I've not used the correct screw because that was missing. Um, but this one, I guess, goes, I don't know where that goes. Let's try to figure that one out. But with this gone, I can see just how bad all of this is. And you can see, let me get a light on the side of that. So with a light in the wheel well, you can see how none of the wheel well actually bonds to the outer wing, which is what we're going to be cutting away and fixing. We've got holes down here, holes down there, hole in the floor down here, and a hole in the seam down here. This has all got to go. This I need to be aware of. I need to keep that well away from any cutting and grinding because I don't want to destroy that. Right now, next, I'm going to start making some pre-cutting measurements so I know what shape and what position everything needs to be back into when we're done. I mean, it's optimistic, but it might work. So first off, I'm going to choose a datum point and we're going to use this ridge, this swage line just here because that isn't going to get cut. That's original metal. So I'm going to cut down or measure down from here that at this point just here, this is exactly 35 centimetres. So that's good to know. And at this point, it is here 34 centimetres. And at this point just here, at the end, sort of level with where it meets just there, that is 25.5. Now I don't really know how accurate this is, but this is to the lip 26. Right, so before I start cutting, I'll show you this all one more time in its before state. So here we go down inside the back of the uh, sill just there. We've got this really, really nasty arch lip, which is just grafted over and it's just thick on the inside with rubbish and gunk. And it's just w the worst kind of, well, worst of my pigeon splatter welding. So I'm not gonna cut this all out in one go. I'm gonna cut this out a chunk at a time and then make a decision as to how much we put back in. I and mean, we could just go along this line here and then up and along. So yeah, I don't want to take off everything in one go and then be committed to that. Let's go a small bit first of all and then make a decision. Right, so cordless grinder to the rescue. Well, to the destruction. I'm smelling a lot of filler while I'm doing this. Oh, it's like a layer of, yeah, it's just thick, thick filler on this thing. Well, there you go. That is the really rotten bit taken out. But I do need to come up a little bit higher, I think. To, I don't know, do I? Hmm, that's an interesting idea. I might go and get the GoPro to give you a better idea of what's inside there. That feels so heavy, because it's the original rusty arch, or arch lip, is just there, and the outside of it is a new one that's just been tacked over it, allowed to fill with water and rust out some more and blob welded and filled with filler. This thing weighs an absolute ton. Right, okay, so I've jumped on the GoPro to get you into the action a bit more so we can see properly into, well, this is the bottom of the sill box section. Oh my God, there's a rust up inside there, which we couldn't see previously. Um, I should get the, the light and everything. It's like the Titanic. Um, so there is rust, um, lots of rust up in here. So this needs to be panelled in out as far as the wing just there. And that likewise needs to be cut back all the way around here. The 
whole lot, yeah, needs to be trimmed back to a certain a few centimeters. And then a new inner, inner wheel arch area needs to be fabricated to come out like this. Um, so that's gonna be some interesting bodywork going on just there. I reckon this must have been going wrong for quite a long time because there's an awful lot of powder inside there that could only really have got in there while the car was driving. Right, <laughs> now I've actually seen the inside of that jacking point. I'm not sure I want to do this, but you know, I'll whack the wheel off because it'll get a better look inside that arch with the wheel off. I wonder where this had gone. It's my uh, pinch wheeled puck, which I thought was in the barn, but I brought it home for some other reason. Right, with the wheel gone, you can really see much more clearly what a state we're in. Well, this bit here isn't actually too bad. We've got this panel here to, to weld up that goes into the boot. Got these areas here to sort out. Uh, yeah, fair bit of work to do though. In fact, that's, oh, okay, yeah. So you can see this seam just here, this ridge. This is where the inner of the inner wing starts. And this is where the outer of the outer wing carries on, I guess. Uh, but let's tidy this up to a solid edge because this is a real mess at the moment. Maybe it'd be less terrifying then. Also, I need to try and remember kind of where this rebate thing is. Oh, you can actually see that. Oh, you can see the, um, a pinch weld on this side. Looking and going slowly is definitely the key here. Don't just dive in and start hacking about the place because that's where things are gonna go wrong if we do that. Well, they really wrong. Go wronger. Uh... Well, that's not looking too special, is it? Okay, right, it's the following day because it got dark last night and I needed to go and have a think about what we were gonna do. Now, my original plan had been to try and cut this back to a straight line and then build my own extension out of here using, I guess, lots of tapered bits of, of metal because this is like a compound curve. It's quite a complicated shape, even though it doesn't particularly look it. But I went on the internet and I found you can buy this in complete panel from here. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not going to just cut in blindly and start hacking around and then try and figure out later. I'm going to try and figure out first before I start cutting blindly. And I hadn't really seen this seam before, but now I know what this seam is. There is a panel you can buy which joins just here and comes out, well, from this point here, this line, out to the actual wing. It's 60 pounds on eBay. I've ordered one, but it won't be here until about the 30th, it's estimated. It's already been posted, but who knows where from. Um, so yeah, that is on its way. So that will make life a lot easier. So once that's arrived, I'm not gonna cut any more of this until I've seen it and got it in my hand, but that will be an, well, easy-ish tack onto there, because that will then hopefully be the correct size and shape that the exterior panel can just zip onto it straight away. And that'll be a quality, solid repair, not any kind of a bodge, which is good. Meanwhile, what I shall do is bodge this bit instead. <laughs> I will think I'll have a look at this area here and this area here, do a little bit of repair on that. Basically, this video has gone from a getting this entire wing done in one session to a two-parter because there's gonna be like a two-week break between me doing this right now and the part arriving and then being able to actually fit it on the car again. Because you just know the day it arrives, it's gonna snow, don't you? But in the cold light of day, <sighs> yeah, that's annoying, but it's not, the end of the world. This bit of metal here, which has got the perforation inside the sill, that doesn't, doesn't look like it was ever actually bonded to the outer edge. So I'm not overly concerned about that. That looks like it's a, a strengthener for the jacking point rather than anything else. I have to consider changing anything else that looks like it needs changing. Ouch. These boots actually look surprisingly good considering they are 40 years old and rusted in place. I'm not looking forward to changing them when they do finally go, but for the moment, they will do. Shock absorbers and springs, but well, they're not leaking and the car sort of bounces quite happily when you push the bumper down. So I think we're okay in that front. 
Um, do we need to change any other rubbers and things? I don't know yet. I've not seen anything that does need changing. Um, even these sway bar bushes don't look too terrible considering the age of the vehicle and the fact it's been bought. Maybe the pack, because it's been parked in a barn for so long, there is a lot of surface rust on here that needs to be wire brushed off and under sealed over. So maybe that's something we can crack on with as well in the meantime while we're waiting for this stuff. I'm vaguely aware we've got lots of sharp edges now, so I'm kind of be careful around that. Now, something I will say while I've got the opportunity to stop and talk for a minute because I'm not doing any welding for a few minutes is that I've had so many people commenting on this video. The car's a basket case. It's not worth doing. It's too far gone, all that kind of stuff. Really, that's not too far gone. Honestly, I've seen far worse cars than that repaired. And if you think that's terrible, you should see what a lot of restoration and professional shops deal with day in, day out. This is a minor repair. Honestly, it's not a big deal. If you think this is worthy of writing your car off, you've really not seen bad cars, honestly. This is not the end of the world by a long shot. This is one step at a time, one bit of metal after another, and the whole thing will just clonk together and then it will be fine. It's depressing seeing it like this, but it's not the end of the world. Right, so let's have a little hackeroony on these areas on the inner wing. I'm not gonna make any more cuts or any more repairs on this area here because I don't know how much metal is gonna come with that new section. So we'll do that all in one hit when that new part arrives. So I'll concentrate today on this bit here. Incidentally, the car has got an axle stand over there. There's nowhere on the back to really put it. Um, and everything else here that I'm using is available on my Amazon affiliate store. If you head over to there, you'll find all the cool tools that I'm using to make this car happen. And browsing that does actually help keep this channel going. Oh, I think I need a bigger, <laughs> I need a bigger grinding wheel on that. That's seen its best. I went, th went through quite a lot of disc when I was cutting um, away the, the side of the car yesterday. So let's now crack on with making more holes in the car. God, Mercedes used really thick steel on this thing. Now, I've got to try and get this bit cut without cutting through the uh, anti-roll bar. That would be annoying. First thing I touch, the anti-roll bar. Well, that's kind of done. You know, I am loving the cordless grinder. This is the first time I've used one of these in anger, and it makes life so much easier. I'm sure you've got spare batteries on hand, but you know, just less cables to get worried about, less things to get tangled. The weight of the cable sometimes makes it awkward to get into funny places. That's so good, I love it. Also loving the fact we can now hoover all this junk out of here. Right, okay. So let's find ourselves a bit of metal that roughly fits that kind of shape. Right, let's get in there with some of the old CAD or cardboard aided design. Trying to come down to that level. Actually, that long, I think. Like I've got a hat on, I can hear that bit of sparkly metal scraping against my head. Right, before I start welding up in here, I'm going to dump some of this rust neutralizing primer inside. I'm not quite sure how much access I'm going to have to this box section once this is all done. I'm suspecting. Well, I've got that hole just there, but let's make life easier on ourselves. And also, this area up here, it's not weld through, but at least it'll stop stuff crossing up quite as much in the interim. I think once all the welding is finished, it would be prudent to fill this car with as much wax as humanly possible. Well, I have been trying to decide whether to do the brakes first or do the welding first. It was a bit of a toss of a coin thing because there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Ultimately though, I'm glad I decided to go with the welding because it means I've got time to order the stuff in and it's going to take a week at least for that new panel to arrive from eBay. So I've got a week maybe to do a bit of brake work on this thing if I really want to get stuck into that. Right, okie dokie, so I've wire brushed all the metal back to shininess all around this. Put some uh, weld through, rust proofing on the back. Got a nice earth up here, I haven't got my gloves on. Oh, the car is on fire. Right, I'm going to go so far as to call that not bad. Just need to do these little bits here now. Oh, and the rest of literally everything else. So what I'm trying to do right here is actually lift where it's bonded onto the inner panel, separate this extra outer panel to get a clean weld to the old inner rather than the old outer.
Now to make the shape of that little indent to go in there, that semicircle, little trick is to go and get some mole grips and a extension bar, put the metal in there, hammer the extension bar into that and you've got yourself a moulded shape. Huzzah! Let's put a little bit of rust proof paint on the back of that and then get it welded in there. Right, that is actually another decent bit of welding. It's not stacking dimes exactly, but it's certainly a decently welded on solid repair and it's not pigeon poo and it's, um, yeah, quite tidy actually. A little bit of grinding on that and that looked really, really nice. What I will do right now though, one that's cooled down in a minute or two hours, still quite hot to touch, is put some more of the uh, MDS rust neutralizing primer on there so it doesn't rot out before anything else happens. Um, the next stages on this car are basically waiting for this new panel to arrive. What I might do in the meantime, if I get really bored, is go in here with the, uh, well I need to get some more wire brush because this is completely gone and basically just wire brush all of the sound deadening off this inner arch because that's just horrible stuff and it could be trapping more rust. I don't think it is because it seems really solid everywhere else but I don't want to be painting over the top of that. I want to get all of that gone and then you know do it properly from scratch. Right so oh we also I need to get underneath the car and wire brush everything and just <laughs> rust proof the entire floor but what I'll do is get this bit welded first and then do the rest of the underside of the car because that'll keep me busy for a long time. I could even go and do the brakes while I'm waiting. I might go and play with a different car, who knows? Right, so this is progress progressing here on the W123. The car starts, it runs, it's getting more solid. It'll have brakes soon, it'll have a floor soon. Wow, this thing's flying along, nearly done. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please, as always, hit like and subscribe. If you wanna see how this story progressed and go back to the beginning of the playlist on this car, it has been a long, long tale. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.